All right, guys, welcome back. Small Town Bassin here. This is part two of our poor idle troubleshooting and solution video that I did last week. So I got the reed valves in and I did the repair. Now there's a couple of things to note when I did the repair. So, so for one, I didn't plan on rebuilding the carbs yet. So I had no need to disassemble all the carburetors. That being said, when I'm removing parts from this motor, like these three sets of carbs, um, there was no need to take the linkage off of them. I could leave all the butterfly valves synced up so I didn't have to take that linkage that, that connects all the butterflies apart. I could leave all that, you know, in place. So when I took the carbs off, I just unhooked the necessary fuel and vacuum lines and unbolted all three sets and removed them as one unit. Got them out of the way. That was pretty simple. I will rebuild the carbs in the future. I've got the kits for it, so we'll uh, we'll do another video on that. But there's a bunch already on YouTube. Uh, rebuilding carbs is about the same anywhere. Maybe I can shoot the video in a little higher quality. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but we'll do it anyway. A buddy of mine wants to do it to his boat, and uh, I think he, he'd feel better if if he knew someone in person that did it, you know? So I'll be that guinea pig. But anyway. So we got the banks of carbs off the, the intake manifold. Now we gotta get the intake manifold off. Well, there are several vacuum lines attached to the sides of this manifold. So I had no need to take the manifold and bring it inside or you know, work on it in a shop table or anything like that. This is all simple stuff. Um, you just got to pay attention to what you're doing and put everything back the way you found it. So to take the manifold off, I just took um, a series of, of bolts off the face of the motor. They're all easy to reach, easy to get to. Um, remove these hex head bolts and give the manifold a little tap, tap, tap with my little uh, machinist hammer, a little brass hammer. Um, you know, a piece of wood would probably do good too. You won't damage anything, but I use the brass hammer because it's softer than the material the intake manifold is made of. So tap, 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 got it to break loose from the gasket and this is where the reed valve assemblies are. So I slide that off the motor and boom, there they are. So I'll show you what I found right now. All right guys, we got it off. And let's just go through these reeds. Now, these look, focus, focus. These look pretty good. These look a little discolored. Don't know what's going on. A little heat there. Uh, I about know why. They all look pretty good on the top side. Now let's go around here to the bottom side. Those look pretty good. Look pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Bingo. Look right there, guys. Whammo. So we got a broken reed. Uh, let's get this guy replaced, man. We got some glass reeds going in. These are the original stainless steel. So these are 14 years old. Let's get these guys out of here, man. Throw them in the trash can and put some custom high-performance glass reeds in and uh, get this baby purring. Let's let all 150 butt-naked squirrels rattle around in this thing. Let's, let's cut them loose. Loose. Okay guys, so in the process of this, so it, it for one it started raining. So, yep. It was drizzling at first. I was trying to hurry up and I couldn't have this camera in the rain. So I took the camera in and tried to hurry up and get this put back together, get everything done before it really started coming down. And it's still raining. This is actually the next day. Uh, but in the process of, of making this changeover, this bad set of reeds, the busted reeds, uh, the, the block they were on, the reed 
block assembly was also damaged. Luckily, shout out to CNO Marine. Luckily, see, I called CNO Marine in White Bluff and they had one in stock on hand. So I took off as fast as I could, went and picked that up and, uh, and got back and finished. Um, I'll show you this, this damage reblock now. All right, so I'm wearing gloves because of the horrible gas smell on my hands. Like my hands still smell like gas from yesterday. Uh, this is this is your reed block right here. Focus. All right, this is your reed block. So it's bolted to the intake manifold where you're not. A, don't focus on me. Focus on this. All right. So it's bolted to the manifold so that your carbs are on this side pulling air through this way. And when the air comes in, it opens the valves. And these are what your valves are supposed to look like. Focus. Like that. So these go on like that. And they are fastened on there with this plate. I should have just put this thing together. Anyway, uh, that is your reed block assembly. So this metal piece on top is to prevent them from opening too far. Enough said. These guys here are supposed to, they're supposed to seal on back pressure. So positive pressure, they open pulls air through, they get through those valves, and when the piston comes back, it creates enough pressure to close that and hold it closed. Well, the problem I had with this damaged assembly, they're coated in rubber on these ends to create like a gasket type seal. Well, it's damaged big time. I could not use this block. Uh, luckily, CNO Marine, had one there, so I picked it up and finished my finished my repair with the new reed block. So this is the busted reed. Not to mention the block was damaged. It, it needed to be replaced no matter what. Focus. Focus. Thank you. I gotta hide behind this thing so you can see it. So it needed to be replaced no matter what, but that created a large air gap. So the fuel was being pulled in through the gap. None of these were opening and it was getting pushed right back out the hole on the backstroke. Um, that's what I ran into. So I get back and I put it all back together while it's raining um, and get it completed. In the process of doing this, I went ahead and changed out several fuel lines. I added a second fuel filter. So now I have a high pressure and a low pressure fuel filter. The low pressure is pulling in after the prime bulb before it gets to the mixing stage and the fuel pump. So that is just fuel. And uh, then the high pressure filter is actually post mixing and pump where it's filtering the mixture of oil and gas. So I've got two filters now. The, and the low, the low pressure filter is also a bowl type. So it will separate water if I ever have that problem. Uh, I'll be able to see it as clear bowl. I'll be able to look and say, oh, I've got some water in my fuel. I can, it's a throwaway $3 filter. I can just replace it once I start getting too much water in it. But, uh, but that's what I run into. Uh, the repair was flawless aside from having to make that run and go get that block from CNO Marine. So guys, when, uh, when, when the sun comes out tomorrow, we're gonna go out there, I'll let you take a look at everything I did and, uh, and we'll talk about it from there. And then we'll come back in and on camera, we will pick a random winner who left a comment on that last video last week to send you some Battleborn swag. All right guys, so uh, stick around and let's head out there and uh, take a look at everything we did. All right guys, so it has finally quit raining. We're gonna get this cowling off and I'm gonna show you what all we did and then we will uh, fire this baby up and let you uh, let you see it running, man. Um, I hadn't started it today, so it's, it's two stroke, it's cold. Um, I know how hard it is to start when it's cold. The temperature dropped drastically last night, so we'll see. Um, it takes a minute to get it started normally. 
Uh, in the last video, it took me two tries to start it, and that was after I had it running already. Um, it should just fire right up, you know, at that point, but it, it doesn't. So we'll see what happens this time. Let me uh, let's get the cowling off and get some water on it, and uh, and we'll see what it does. All right, guys. So before we get it started, let's do a little walkthrough on this thing. This is my new low pressure fuel filter, and I need to put a check valve in here to prevent my oil mixture from draining back into that. I don't want oil mixture in this filter. Um, so once this gets back up, it's actually mix it twice and we'll be rich in oil. I don't really want to waste oil like that. I replaced all these fuel lines here. Um, I replaced my, um, basically the the fuel for for choking so it'll choke and feed a little bit of fuel into the car um, right here so this is the this is the valve that does that um, so I replaced these I replaced all these fuel lines going to all the carbs put hose clamps instead of zip ties on them and uh, my new gasket in here for the intake manifold and uh and that's that's basically what i did the the whole job took me about minus the run to white bluff to get that other uh valve body so i'm guessing about three hours three hour job um for somebody that's never done it before and i did it right three hours that's pretty good um all right let's uh let's turn the water on put the key in it and see what it does Wow. First try. Now that right there is freaking amazing, man. First try. First freaking try. That was the problem with my motor the whole time. And in hindsight, what I'm thinking is the previous owner started experiencing trouble. The carbs were so clean when I got them off. I think this motor has had these symptoms for a while now and the previous owner was instructed maybe by a mechanic maybe he did it on his own to clean the carbs do a carb rebuild um, that did not solve his problem um, he apparently sold the boat or traded it in and i bought it now it ran and it started when i got it it was tough to start i know two strokes can be difficult to start but there's sometimes when I'm afraid I'm going to drain my battery. It takes so long to start it. Um, luckily, it does finally fire up with some, you know, goosing of the gas pedal, choking, all different things, priming the bulb three or four times. Finally, I decided there was something wrong. I researched it, came to my own conclusions, and repaired the problem. She starts right up, man. Good to go. Uh, moral of the story is. Do not be afraid to work on your own equipment. Now, if it's under warranty, by all means, take advantage of that warranty, take it to a dealer, let them do it. But if you are out of warranty, do what I did. Do a little research, man, fix it yourself. It can be done. These things are basically glorified, gigantic weed eater motors. It is a two stroke engine. They are simple machines. Now there's a lot of electronics on it that I hadn't gotten into yet, but eventually I'm sure I will. The mechanical side, it's pretty simple. Luckily there was no damage to the pistons, the cylinders, 
uh, because of that busted reed. I think I got kind of lucky. Uh, the pieces were nowhere to be found. Um, I'm thinking when the guy maybe did the rebuild on the carbs, he found the busted reed pieces in the carbs and didn't really know what they were. Maybe, I don't know. I have no idea, but it's fixed. Let's do this again, man. Let's turn the water on, fire it up again. I'm beside myself excited. Now when I put the boat in and go to fire it up, I'm not sitting on the ramp for 15 minutes trying to start my boat. <laughs> that is beautiful. All right guys, man, what a great experience with this motor. Oh my God. And it's it got down into the, into the 30s last night. Cold as a popsicle, man. Um, fired right up. I didn't expect it to go that well. I thought I would at least have to, you know, crank it for a minute, get the pump kind of moving fuel, and then prime it one more time, and then maybe it'll start. But in this case, it fired right up, man, no problem. I primed the bulb, made sure it was tight, went to the key, choked it for about a three count, like one, two, three bump the key and boom man she was ready to go uh, phenomenal now let's pick this comment all right so i'm going into youtube going into youtube right now and let's uh let's go up here let's go to studio beta come on if y'all hear that noise in the background, my wife and sister are making a dessert for Easter. Anyway, all right. This is the video we want to pick. Mercury two-stroke outboard. Going to tube, buddy. Pick a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, choose from all comments and go. And the winner is Sam Shepard. All right, Sam. If you're watching this video, go to the Small Town Bass and Facebook page, send me a message with your shipping information, and tell me what you want. Hat, cup, beanie, a beer koozie, neck buff, um, all the items I showed you last week. Tell me what you want, man. I'll send it right out to you. Um, monday um so yeah i'll ship it out to you monday and uh and thanks for watching all of you thanks for watching we're gonna do this again next week um we will figure out a way to give away more of this battleborn swag i'm kind of excited about giving it away and until next time you keep on fishing